uh, lecture. Okay. Last time we we were covering like uh, linked structures. And remember, I don't like like sometimes people call them linked lists. Really, a linked list is a specific type of linked structure. So I'm calling them linked structures, and they're just made up of like you'll you'll notice here that there's no class. Like okay, we've got student, we've got hello world, we've got course, and we've got the headers student int node course but like course and student those were those are things we made for a previous class and like they're not useful for us right now uh but you'll notice that there's no like class for the, for like the link structure Be and that's because the link structure is really it's just made up of uh our there we go it's just made up of our a series of the int nodes so this is a question uh we can't see the code <sighs> There we go. Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, we've got our student, we've got our course, but those, you know, those are classes that were from a previous lecture. Uh, here, we just have int node that's relevant here. And like, there's no, there is no CPP file for like the whole link structure. It's just a CPP file for int node. And then we're, we're like linking these link, or these, these int nodes together. And we're doing that by saying, well, okay, every int node has like their data, which in this case is going to be a pointer to an integer. And then it's also going to have a next, where next is a pointer to an int node. And conceptually, that the idea is, and I, I'll draw it out again. Paint. I like Microsoft Paint. I like to think I'm pretty good at it. Uh, the idea here is like, we just have the int node class. I'm going to draw as a circle. And I know really the contents are like arrows to integers but let's not worry about that. I'm just gonna draw them as like an integer there. We've got one. But it also has, this object here also has a pointer that will get us to, if it exists, it could be pointing to null pointer, but if it exists, another int node. And then this might be pointing to another one, which is like 33, I don't know. And then here we've got negative two, and then this points to null so now we have this link structure, but there's no, like currently we don't have a class for this. This right here is not like, there's no data structure we have written that's like, that that represents this whole thing. All we have is just a series of linked nodes. And in fact, we've got, all we really have is some variable, which in our example right here, we had a head. We created a, a, a pointer to an int node, called it head. So here we have head, and all it is is a pointer to the beginning. This is all we have. And what's interesting though is with this, with the pointer to the head, we can access anything in here. You know, we can just go to the head and we can get, get the next, get the next, 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 and so on and so on and so on. So that's where we are. I will say that, let me just clear all this out. We're about to take a bit of a pivot in the class because it, it'll it'll seem as if we're breaking some of the rules we learned right some of the things that we learned in class so far were well we want our like like the the what is in like the header file and the the how is in the cpp file right the the how like the code that actually describes how the functions and everything work those go in the cpp files and the header there's no real code in the header. It's just like declaring all the things like, oh, this function's gonna exist, that function's gonna exist, here are the variables, the attributes and whatnot as well. That was all that was really there. Oh, and I guess we include our imports and we had our like visibility modifiers, you know, our public, our private. And that was kind of the rule. Well, we're about to break that rule kind of. Technically, we're not breaking the rule based on how it's working, but it will feel like we're breaking the rules. More on this in a moment. But, so at this stage of the semester, we're, we, we've done a lot. It might not seem like it. And I know I was joking how like only like last week, I was like, welcome to 162. But the reality is we've learned a lot. You know, there was a lot of review. For those of you that came from the engineering side, you learned all about classes. For those of you that came from 161, C++ is like completely different, right? Although it's not really that different, but it's fairly different. It's a heck of a lot more different than Python than it is from C, which a lot of the engineering students have experience with. Pardon me. So we, we've done a lot. And we learned about our first uh, data structure. It's a simple one, but it's like the, the integer array stack or array int stack, whatever I called it. And we learned about our, our nodes and our link structures. 
At this stage, what I would like to do right now is take some time, before we jump into the lecture, I would like to take some time to do a bit of like a, a Q&A type thing. Because I'm certain at this point there are some burning questions you've had. Maybe you didn't ask the question when it came up, or maybe you didn't even think of the question until after it came up. You didn't think of the question until after the assignment or something, whatever. Um, let's, let's do like a bit of like a Q&A at this stage. Uh, if no one asks questions, that's fine. I'll just go on through the through the slides. But right now, I'm leaving the floor open to to you to ask a question, and I'll do my best to answer it. So let's see if there's anything. <clears throat> I'll uh, I suppose I'll wait till 125 <laughs> before I give up on questions. If there's no questions, that's fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force you to ask a question or anything if you don't have any. And I guess if you don't, that's great news. But I wouldn't be surprised if you do have questions. Ah, for memory leaks, can you lay out uh, definite rules of when we need to delete things we create? No, because there's no such thing. Sadly, there are. Yeah, it's it's kind of a so the rule is whenever you see a like a new keyword, whenever we see something like. If in our code, oh, perfect, here. We see, okay, we created head, that's a pointer to an int node, okay? So let's go back here. So I've got head, and we said, okay, you're a new, so you're a pointer to a new uh, int node. So this is just some node, okay? Because we saw the new keyword, the rule here is, okay, that thing's gotta get deleted eventually. And really the best place to delete this would be at the end. Because that's like, we're using this thing for the duration of this program. If this was something I created and then 20, like 10 lines of code later, like here, I didn't need anymore, I could delete it here. In fact, I should delete it here. But because I'm using this, like this thing here throughout the duration of this program, this code that I'm writing, I'm gonna delete it at the end. <clears throat> so also another big thing too, is when I delete, if when I write something like delete head, this thing right here, this variable, which contains this pointer, this isn't what's deleted. It's the thing that head points to. So this will be the thing that gets deleted. Where head is left alone, but that's okay because that variable that contains a pointer to an int node, that was in like static memory. It didn't need any fancy allocation. The computer knew, okay, this is how much RAM I need to allocate for this integer node pointer. It's just, it's just a memory address, that's it. So we don't need to delete that. We need to delete the thing that it was pointing to. And in this case, why? Well, it had that new keyword in front. There's only one little finicky little difference here with the new keyword is if we were making like an int, uh, wait, int pointer sum array, I'm gonna make an array of integers equals new uh, int of size 10, I don't know, whatever, there. So, and this could be a variable, it doesn't need to be hard coded. Some value, there we go, okay? I know this isn't declared, but whatever. The only funny thing here is when I wanna delete this, like this is a pointer, I right? And we see new, so we should delete. But the only catch here is we need to do that slight little modification on our delete. We would say delete these things, we need the like square brackets and then some array, there. So this is the only difference when we're deleting something that we, although this is an integer pointer, it's, it's pointing to an array. So we're going and saying, okay, delete this whole thing. Now, the, the other half of your question that I'll answer, which I think may be really what you were asking is, well, how do you know when to delete the thing though? And the answer is when you don't need it anymore, when you know that it's not important anymore. When you don't need this code anymore, when you've got this variable pointing to some object and you're never gonna use that object again, that's when you delete it. You may remember that, in fact, I think I've got it here. In our course, no, I don't have it here, I guess. Maybe I never wrote it. In our course deconstructor, hmm, I guess I didn't have it in this particular example. You could imagine, like, I think in the lecture, no, you know what? Let me just check. Uh, I'm just doing a quick check here to see if I have it like in the slides or not. Let me 
-hmm. Okay, clear course, perfect. And then we've got our deconstructor, which looked like this, but ultimately I just called clear course. Okay, L look at this deconstructor for a second. When I'm deleting the course, I need to go through my array here and delete every individual pointer, every individual thing that each pointer in my, my class array points to. And then at the end, I'm going to delete my class. If you create a new string pointer in the function that isn't the main one, do you still need to delete it because it would go away after the function is done? No, you absolutely still need to delete it. If you use like the new keyword, um, the, yeah, you would still need to delete it. it what'll, so what's happening is the variable, so the question you're asking is if I have a function and it's not the main and I create a, a pointer to a string, okay? When that function is done, C++ will automatically deallocate de all of the memory it allocated. But that's like the memory C++ allocated. So the variable that's the pointer to the string gets deallocated. But the thing that that pointer, that string pointer variable, variable pointed to does not get deallocated. It's an important distinction. It might seem like, wait, there's so many different rules. Actually, the rules, there's like three. And if, you, if you're getting, you're thinking too hard. If I ever see the new, I need to delete it. But you said whenever like a function's done, it automatically deallocates the RAM it, it allocated. Well, no, only the RAM that the C++ allocated, which was for like the, the pointer variable, not the thing that the pointer variable pointed to. But to finish the thought I was on here, here I'm going through deleting every individual thing in the array. So in this example, if I have I don't know, A, which is a pointer to this array, which has pointers to student object. And this is empty, whatever. What I'm saying here is I'm saying, okay, the thing at location I delete. But remember, it's not deleting this. This is left alone. It's deleting the thing that this points to. Oh, okay, so it's deleted. Then we increase I, oh, okay. Increase I, okay, delete. We're done. Now we need to delete the thing that A points to. There we go. If we did this in the reverse order where we deleted A and then wanted to delete these, we'd be in trouble because we deleted this, but now we actually don't have any pointer, like we don't have access to our pointers to these, these poor students here that are now stuck in RAM forever. They're forever like in RAM purgatory. Uh, why don't we need to delete A at the end? We, we did. That, that A, my class is A in this example, and that's, we, we, we did delete it. That's why I was saying after we've gone through the loop and deleted each of these things, delete, 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 then we say delete A, which deletes this. This right here we don't need to delete because it's just a pointer variable, and C++ is happy to allocate just a simple little thing here and then deallocate de this. But remember, A is a variable that contains the memory address. This is what A pointed to. We don't need to delete this because C++ will delete this simple little memory address variable for us, but it can't delete the thing that we actually created with the new keywords. So carrying on this idea here of, in this example, I went through and deleted everything. But you may also be saying, well, hold on a minute. You told us that, like in this integer, or array, integer, whatever, like int array stack, let's, let's find my deconstructor. Mm. It's gonna be here somewhere. Ah. In my deconstructor, I said, do not do this. Don't do this. We still want to delete the stack part, but don't go through the individual things in the array that represents the stack. Why? I mean, we had to do that for our class. Well, when, when we did it for the course object, whenever we created 
And then did I close the slides? Ah, shoot. Whenever we, whenever we added someone to the course, I can just go to the code here. Whenever we added someone, you'll see that the course object was like, it was in the add function where we called, like where we actually created the new student. The course was the one, it was the class that was responsible for creating the student object in RAM somewhere, okay? So with my design idea here, and understand that everything I'm saying here, there are no hard, fast rules on the, the when in this particular, like there, there aren't. This is a design decision I've made. And I'm like, well, because I made it here, I see the new student here. I'm going to be the one responsible for for deleting the students, right? Because this class was the one that created it here. So when I delete this class, which again I know the deconstructor isn't written here, but when I delete it, I'm going to want to make sure I delete all the things that this like class created. In oops, in uh, this example, if we go look at our Array stack is the constructors is empty to string push. You'll see that this object here, the array in stack, it is not creating the integers. It is not responsible for the, th for deallocating, for deleting the things that were on the stack because it was never responsible for creating it. It never was responsible for allocating those integers. Besides those integer pointers, might not even be to something in dynamic memory. That could be something like I wrote the code, like something like this. I'm gonna go back to my main, just ignore everything here. Cause I could say like int a equals six. And then I can say int pointer b equals the memory address of a, done. So this wasn't created with a new keyword. So if I pushed a, or pardon me, B, I guess, onto my stack, and I've tried to delete what it pointed to, well, we, I mean, we got a problem because this isn't in dynamic memory. This doesn't need to be deleted. C++ is gonna be angry at us. We're trying to deallocate memory that it's responsible for, not something that you're responsible for. I could like, don't, like, remember, I can do this. There, now I'm responsible for deleting this one because like, oh, I go and I allocated some memory and dynamic memory space and it's a pointer to it. B and C are both pointers to integers, but this integer, it's in static RAM. This one in dynamic. How do you know? Well, because we see the new character, the new keyword here. It goes and creates it. This it's happy to create because when it sees in the main, oh, it's an integer, I know how much. It's, it's four bytes. I can store this integer in four bytes. I'm gonna go alloc, when I hit run, before any of the program really runs, I'm gonna go allocate four bytes of RAM to store, store this integer. Where here, it's like, well, okay, now we need to go allocate four bytes of RAM to store this integer somewhere else in the dynamic space of RAM. Point being, in this, uh, where did it go, push? This is stack, yeah. Point being in the deconstructor, we are, I guess in the push, you don't, like, is this point to something in dynamic or static space? So you don't know, but here's the thing, that's not your problem. The push function, it does, that's not its problem. Because who was responsible for creating it? Well, in our example, it was, it was in main. So main would be the one responsible for it. Just like here, see, I created the new int. And then here I'm deleting each, I'm getting the data from each one and deleting it. So the, the main in this example was the one responsible for deleting it. Now, remember, we could be creating a stack in another function that's not main, but it's in this, it happens to be in our main function here where we allocated that RAM. So we're the one responsible for it. So when we delete the stack, we do not need to delete the things like in our stack, because that's not our problem. And if the user of our of this stack, if the user of this code forgot to delete it elsewhere, that's their problem, not your problem as the person who built the stack. All you need to worry about as the person who's 
built the stack is this part here, the delete the array, because that was your problem. You were the one that created this, that array, that stack array, or that array that represents the stack more precisely. So that's the only thing you have to delete, only this bit. There's a long-winded explanation to maybe a much simpler question, but anyways. Any more questions? So wait, yep. <laughs> yes, in this example, with the course object, it makes sense to have the course be the one responsible for deallocating the memory or deleting the things that it created because it was the it was within the course class that created the new student objects so we wanted to delete those there but with the stack we didn't need to delete it because the stack at no point was responsible for the memory that was or was not allocated for those integer pointers or pardon me for the things that those integer pointers pointed to you're going to get confused if you're looking for a rule of thumb because it doesn't truly exist. You ha every situation is different. The trick I do is who's responsible for deallocating this memory? Who, who, ma who made this thing? If, I, if, if some code within my class allocated the memory, I'm going to be inclined to feel like the code, like that class is responsible for deallocating that memory. But maybe that doesn't even make sense in the particular situation you're in. So there is no hard, fast, this is the rule. The rule is when it's, whenever we create it, we got to deallocate it. Where? That depends. Who's responsible for it? When do you not need it anymore? Those are the questions you have to ask and answer. So hopefully that helped. Other questions. This is good. I think this is a good opportunity. You know, we're halfway through the course. Uh, part, well, wait. Uh, we're halfway dot C, C it's not, see, you're looking for a hard, fast rule. There isn't one. It's the rule. I like the question I would ask myself is who made it. And I'm inclined to think that they would, who, whatever code did it. I'm going to think that that code's the one responsible for deleting it most of the time, but that's not like, that's not the rule. This is one of those things where in programming, like, if statements work this way, they always work this way. There's no if, ends, or buts. They work this way. Deletes. Well, it kind of depends. How do you wear the what? Like, the rules on how the deletes work are the same. The rules on who, what, when, where, why, how you delete, those will differ. Those are, spe those are individual, specific, situation dependent. That, but... Like, that's the question I ask myself when deciding what things to delete. But again, that question is not your silver bullet. That is not going to answer the question for you 100%. <clears throat> I'll give like another minute, see if any other questions pop up. I will say confusion about delete is typical. It, it's it's more than typical. It's almost expected because because the rules are so not. How harshly will you get docked for memory leaks? Uh, I put it in. Let me have a quick look here. It's not. It won't be that bad. Like like you're not gonna get like absolutely destroyed of it. Here I'll I'll, I'll let me have a look at my marking scheme for assignment one and see how many marks could be lost because of a leaky code. What do we got? Do I even have any leak? So, like for example, like in the deconstructor, like I'm, I'm a, like, if your deconstructor is correct, you get two marks. Maybe you'll lose a mark because you didn't do it right, and. Like you, you can lose marks here and there, but it will be like on the assignments that is 60, it will be a not 
beefy, hefty chunk of your exam. Or your exam, your mark. Uh, out of how many marks? Yeah, 60. <laughs> Are you going to post a sample solution for assignment one? No, I will not. Uh, out of how many marks? Yeah, 60. 60. Um, do note that the mark, like, I, I don't mark these. The TAs mark them. Um, so I have a marker. And they're the ones, like, I give them the marking scheme. But I give them the freedom because they're the ones, you know, boots on the ground, seeing what everyone's doing. And marking tends to be kind of like a, well, they did this and do, those do that and the, this. And then sometimes, so there's a lot of nuance that'll pop up in the marking rubric for the assignment. Probably not because I actually, like, the marking rubrics will change a lot based on some of the questions I'll get throughout the, uh, well, the assignment's been assigned. So, like... Like I changed the marking rubric this morning based on some of the questions I was seeing because it's like, well, okay, a lot of students were asking questions about this, which means maybe that part wasn't covered as well. So I'll lower the amount of marks assigned to that. So yeah, I won't post the, the rubrics, um, but you can get a sense for what are the more important parts of the assignments just by, like the beefy parts of the assignments are gonna be like the constructor, right? Like in the last assignment, that constructor was tough, right? And there's a lot of code in there. That's that's worth a lot. But yeah, so that's why. So the, the reason I don't post the rubrics is because there it gives me the flexibility, which in the end just benefits the students. <clears throat> so pray to the TAs, yes. Yep. <laughs> All right, I'll give another minute. Uh, to see if there's any other questions before I start lecturing what we're supposed to be learning today. If you didn't notice, assignment two has been posted. I posted it Monday. What's my favorite data structure? <laughs> I don't know. I like graphs because they're fun. That's why. Because code that works with graphs, which you'll learn all, like, which is a lot of next year, uh, graph algorithms and working with graphs and what graphs can do and represent, they're a lot of fun. And that is my completely biased answer. And they're also like a generalization of a tree, which is a generalization of a list, which is a generalization of other silly, silly little simple data structures. I do like hash maps. I do like those. Those are fun. Those are really interesting. Which, sadly, we don't learn about in this class. But you'll learn about next year. Uh, you used a hash map. That's what the dictionary was. That's what uh, you did for assignment one. You used one without really knowing how awesome they are in the back. I did talk a little bit about them in 161, so you may remember them. Um, but, yeah. All right, seeing no other questions, I will carry on and continue with the lecture. So let me make sure I am, yes, okay. So things, this, this Q&A part has been recorded. It'll be posted to YouTube anyway. So if there's something that maybe I said quickly and you're like, wait, what? Remember it's on YouTube. Um, and one thing I like about YouTube is I, it shows me who like, a lot of the statistics and analytics of like who's watching the videos. And I was getting really excited because I was seeing that like my videos were being watched like like 200 times or 100 times. I'm like, wow, wow, the students must be really using these videos. But when I looked at the analytics, like 80% of all the views were from like India and Bangladesh. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> they're there if you need them. If you don't use them, whatever, that's fine. I'm putting them on YouTube anyways. I guess so. VPNs, right, right. You're all VPNing into Bangladesh and India. That's, that's of course what's happening. You're right. <laughs> Okie dokie. All right, all right, all right. Um, so time for actual lecture. Okay, don't need this anymore. Close. All right. Generics and generic nodes. A generic is awesome. And it's kind of, here's, here's the high level idea of what it is, right? So you have a variable for an integer and it's, it's like a box that can hold any integer, right? And if I ask you, 
well, but what number's in there? The answer is, I don't know. Before I hit run and the, the number gets calculated and put in there, I don't know what the number is, but I know it's going to be a number. It can be any number that fits in four bytes, uh, an assigned integer. Um, so I like I know that a number is going to be in there, but it could be any number. And if you're like, well, how do I know what I'm going to want to do with that number if I don't know what the number is? And the answer is, well, I, like we don't really know at this point, but we can write our code, maybe like ifs and else and whatnot to act a certain way depending on what that number is. Well, a generic is, this, is a very similar idea to a variable, except instead of having like an integer with any arbitrary uh, value in it, it's like a variable for a type. So we made, for example, an array int stack, and we made an int node. But wouldn't it be a real pain in the ass if you're like, well, I don't want an integer node. I want a float node. I want a, I want a double node, or I want a Boolean node or I want a string node, or I want nodes that point to student objects. I'm gonna have to rewrite the code for each of those different types for the data every time I want like I want to like make a node. That's gonna be a pain in the ass, isn't it? That's gonna really suck. But what if I told you there's a way to say, okay, have a pointer to some type. And then depending on what type it is, like th this is what you're going to do. Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, that's what we're doing right here. So the point of this lecture, see why generics are awesome. See how to implement them by making a generic node class. See why we normally have to write the code in the header now. Yeah, I know. Uh, so here we go. Int node, here we go. I just said this. Int node, there, we created it. If I want to make a character node, this is what we're going to have. Okay, here, new character node. And assume I've got the CPP file that goes with this. And I want a double node. Okay, great. There we go. This, this, this is how I do it. Uh, isn't this dumb? Yes, it is. There's got to be a better way. There is. Sweet. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to define a template. And a template is basically saying, okay, you're going to... This is how you're going to work for an arbitrary type. And here's what we're saying. First, we say template less than class uppercase T, although do note that whatever this thing is here, it's an uppercase T, that's the convention. You could make this whatever you want. This is just like a variable name, basically. It's a variable name that represents an arbitrary type. But T is what we typically use. Um, and you can have like a class that has multiple generics, so you can end up having like T, U, and whatnot. But like, kind of like in pointy brackets, we say class T. So we're saying something of class T. We're saying, okay, class node, the private, well, we're going to have something of type T that's going to be data. Now, you'll notice that T, it's not T star. Remember, with integer, if I go back, I was saying, well, I'm going to enforce the fact that, like, it's an integer star. Where here, it's just T. Why isn't it T star? Well, remember, the, the types here can be whatever we want. So T could be an int or an int star, or an int star, 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 star. T can be whatever type, because remember like integer and integer pointer are two different types. So we'll have the data of some arbitrary type T. We're gonna have a pointer to a node that's next. Okay, that's what we need. Like this isn't generic. It's always going, the, the next is always gonna be a node. We've got our constructors, one that takes something of type T, the data, our copy constructor, We've got get data, which is going to return something of type T. Again, I don't know what T is yet, but it's it's going to be, if this was int, it's going to be an int. If it's, in, if it's an integer pointer, it's going to be an integer pointer. Void is set data. Well, that's giving it something of type T. Get next, well, that returns a node pointer. And then set next, well, that just takes a node pointer. So the class is the keyword to make a generic class. No, it's, it's, uh, it's template right here. Th this is like now saying, okay, this is going to be our generic one. We're defining a template. And yeah, so template, the T is like a variable name for the type. Oop, 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 oop. Okay, so this is how would we, we would then go and create one of these things. Except here, we wouldn't write type. We would say what the type we wanted. So if I wanted to make an integer pointer node, 
this is what I would say. I would say node less than int star star head equals a new node of type integer pointer. So if we want like a node class for ints, will it like create a node where all the t's in there are replaced with ints? Yes, that's ex that is 100% exactly what's happening. Although I'm going to encourage you not to do something of type ints, I would encourage you to do pointers to ints because we like pointers. Remember, we really, really like pointers. Technically, you don't have to, but we like pointers. Uh, so yeah, here's the code we write if we want an integer pointer. Here's what we type if we want a character pointer. Here's what we write if we want a double pointer. Here's what we write if we want a Boolean pointer. And then, well, here's, so here's what we would write if we do want an integer. So it's not pointers, it's, it's an actual integer. Here's what we want if we, we write if we want a character. Point is, look, we only have to like write it once. Isn't that wonderful? We don't need to create a whole new class for each of these different types. We don't need an integer node, we don't need a character node, we don't need a double node, we don't need a Boolean node, and so on and so on and so on and so on. So how do we make it happen? Okay, we need to define a template for the possible types. And a template, it's just like a framework. It's like, here's how you're gonna work, then find and replace the T with whatever type you're, you're using. It's easy. And then here's what's happening. C++ will go to the template and then automatically generate the code for the types you need. So what the program puts in type, what the programmer puts in type. So it will automatically go and generate the actual CPP code for you. So in this example here, we've got int node C++. We wrote all this code, right? We wrote all this. Well, what we're gonna end up doing is basically taking all this code put it into the header, but the header is now going to be a template class. And then down here with int node, this will be empty. And you're going to say like, well, hold on, you said all, like you put the how in the C++ file. Well, that's true. But when we're putting the how in the, oops, in the header, we're not actually putting the how in the header. We're putting a template for the how in the header. And then C++ will come along and automatically generate the code that really we would be putting in our CPP file. So it's in the end, it's going to feel like you're writing the how in the header, which is kind of annoying. But technically, you're not really. You're writing the template, and then C++ automatically generates the how code. But perhaps we're C people are splitting hairs. Could we use a template for a string string node or would that be too much since it's not a primitive type? Well, I recommend uh, you give it a go, but th the answer is yes. Yes, you can. And you're going to be doing that in assignment too because you're going to make your own type, which is like a you're, it's a, you're doing a maze solver. So you'll have like a maze piece and then you'll have a, a stack of pointers to those maze pieces, whatever I call them. I can't remember a cell maybe. Okay. How do I make it happen? So where do we write the templates in the header? This may annoy you. Yeah, I just said this. Okay. All right, here's the header. I realize you can't read this because there's a lot going on. So we're going to break it down piece by piece. This is now the node header file. If you squint really closely, you might be able to see the fact that the top bit is like the template class T and it's basically the old header. And then the below bits is just copy paste of the old stuff, but did a find replace type thing. Too small. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> this is what we saw before. This, is, this bit's new, but looks a lot like the int node CPP file. So here's the beginning of it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna create this by copying and pasting everything, and I'm gonna and pay special attention of where I'm putting what and whatnot. So a new item, oh, a new class, and a node. I'm just gonna call it a node now because it's not gonna be an int node. It's just a regular old node of whatever type we want it to be, because it'll be generic. So here we go. So this is what we have. Here is our. I'm gonna close this. Close this. Close, close, okay. So, oh, no. So here's our node CPP file and here's our node header file. Okay, well, first thing I'm gonna do is just go here and copy all this over. Okay, so you'll see, here, let me open up int node. It's going to look almost identical. Two differences. The first difference is at the, uh, at the top, I say template class T. Can, I, can you go away? All right, whatever. The, the first difference is, so here's int node. 
class in node. Here I say template class T class node. So there's the diff there's the first difference. So I have that extra line right above class, whatever we call the class. And then the other difference is the fact that, well, my int stars are all replaced with T's. Don't get overzealous and start replacing your nodes with T's. That would be a problem. You, you probably very much don't want that. But the things of whatever the data is, those will be type T. And we're going to now start writing all the rest of the code here while leaving all this alone. Node CPP, this right here, my node CPP file is done. That's it. I have include node.h, done. There, it's one line of code. This is all I will be writing in node CPP. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we're going to add the new stuff here. So now let's write our generic default constructor. Perfect. This is how I write it. I'm going to take all this. And I'm going to go to my header. Remember, not in the CPP file. I'm going to put it here. And let's now compare it to the int node CPP file. So int node CPP said, okay, int node, colon, colon, int node, open, close, whatever. It, it was this. It was simple. So how does it look for the generic one? Well, we say template class T. It's the same that we put above the start of where like our header header part was. But we now replace it with this. It's, it's node type T. So this is a little different. You'll see that, uh, uh, where is my node CPP? No, yeah, int node CPP. So here was int node, where here I now have to say like, well, the name of the class, which is node, but then like I do need to put like the, the T there. Why? Because I do, that's, that's the syntax that we need. And what are the default values I'm assigning it? Well, I'm making it zero and null pointer. Well, how does this differ with int node CPP? Well, the default constructor here is, I don't know what, <laughs> that was funny. Um, the default constructor for the int node had a null pointer, null pointer. But here with our default constructor for the, the generic version, you'll see that I set data to zero and next to null pointer. See, if I set data to null pointer, we might run into a bit of a problem because I don't know what the type of data is. Data might be a pointer to something of some type, or like it might be an integer pointer, or it might just be an integer. And I'm gonna have a hard time assigning an integer the value null pointer. So in this example, we put zero, where zero is kind of like the stand-in default value for something of a, a more general type of like, well, is it a pointer? Is it a not pointer? What's its type? It's set it to zero. That means just nothing. So carrying on. Yeah, okay, before, yeah, da, da, da. but here we have no clue what the type is. We'll be, yeah, all right. I'm just gonna leave it in this mode. Don't make fun of me for not making this full screen as everyone else would typically do. And I'm only doing it this way because it's easier to copy and paste. So the not default constructor, well, it's the same bit so far. We got template class, whatever, template class, whatever, node type T. But here, of course, the only difference is, is in this particular constructor, it takes something of type T and, and just there, it just assigns its data uh, whatever that past value was. Whether it's an integer or an integer pointer, a character, a character pointer, it doesn't matter. We just throw it right into that attribute data of type T. What's T? I don't know at this stage. We don't know. Some arbitrary type. But as long as this fact, the fact that D is type T, which we see right here, and data is type T, we're, we're type safe. We know that well, whatever T is, if it's an integer T, all the T's are going to become integers. If it's a character pointer, all the T's are going to become character pointers. And because D and data are the same type, we're good to go. Here's a copy constructor. This is basically going to look the same. Except we've got this. And of course, we replaced it with node T. And we had to put this here. We all, like, so before, we only had like this. Right? Well, you know, it's generic. Now, there was a question I had in the slides of, is this a deep copy? And the answer is no. 
because what's data? Data might be a pointer to an object. So I didn't create a new a copy of the thing that that object pointed to and then assigned it. No, no, I just, I copied the pointer if T was a pointer. But the reason I really can't do a deep copy in this particular example is I don't know what data is. How, do, how deep does that go? How deep would I have to go? I don't know. If it's an integer, I don't have to go deep at all. If it's an integer pointer, 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 well, I, I got to go really deep. But I don't know because I don't know what T is yet. And our template deconstructor, and I did hear the boop, I'll go look at it in a second, is this. I'm going to leave it alone with the idea being that the node class is never going to be responsible for deallocating any memory. If T happens to be a character pointer or a string pointer, um, I'm not, like, the node class is not responsible for that, though. Whoever created it and then gave me a pointer to that thing that I then set my attribute to point to, I'm not responsible for that, though. So we won't actually need a CPP file for generic type. We just write it below the header. Yes, but we do need the CPP file. It's going to look like this. We're going to want this file. It's just hilariously empty. Can we overwrite, override the generic given a specific type, a certain class? Can you maybe be a little bit more precise? I'm not sure what you mean. A certain class. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. Like we can... Like when we do... Let's see. So if, if node is called with an int, it fills with generic int code. Oh, watch the time. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. I guess I'll have to wrap up here. Uh, to answer your question, maybe this one right here. When we create it, it will go and be like, okay, I need to I need to generate the code for an integer pointer and uh, generate the code for a character pointer. If this was all in one file and I hit run, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six. We would have generated code for six different types of the node class. But if we wanted extra functionality for a specific type, uh, oh yeah, you can use different templates or you can do like inheritance and whatnot. We'll, we'll talk about that way late, later and we're, we're over time. Uh, anyways, hopefully uh, we'll finish this Friday, I guess. Uh, thanks for coming. I'll see y'all later.